Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to our Python development series. Now we left off where we covered what strings are, what placeholders in strings are, all that good stuff. In today's lecture, we'll be tackling one of Python's first data structures, which are Python lists. Okay? So first thing first, what is a list? Well, generally, what do you think of when you think of a list? It's a set of items that are ordered, they have an index, you know what each value is, and that's basically the same case for a Python list. It's a comma separated value that allows us to access any item based on its index. So let's say I'm going shopping, okay? I wanna create a shopping list in Python. I wanna get apples, oranges, bananas, and cheese, okay? Now, one way I could do this is by associating each item to a variable. I could say item one is apples, item two is oranges, item three is bananas, item four is cheese. And yes, that works, but if you think about it, you don't wanna create tens of hundreds of variables because that's inefficient. Instead, we have lists. So take a look. So I have apples, oranges, bananas, and cheese in my list. And this is the syntax. You start with a square bracket, have your four items separated by commas, and then you close it with the square brackets. Now, this part over here is for the variables. Yes, I could have done the variables, but instead, let's X this, and we're gonna use a list. One key thing that you have to remember about a list is that the indexing is off by one. What you guys might think as the first item, which is apples, is actually index zero in the list because counting starts from zero. So if I want the second item in my list, I'm not gonna say list two, I'm gonna say list one because the second item in our list is actually the first index position. So let's go ahead and create a list and everything will make sense soon. So I'm going to go ahead and call this um, shop list and again, square brackets, every item separated by commas. So these are strings again, apples, oranges, bananas, bananas, and cheese. Okay. So now we have a shop list. If you go ahead and print this out, you'll notice that this is the array format and every item separated by commas. Now, how do I access a value? Well, we just discussed the index is by is off by one. So if I want the first item, I say shop list zero. Well, it's very straightforward. All I have to do is say shop list and then in square brackets, put in your index. So I want the first item, I say shop list zero, I get apples. I want the third item, I say three minus one, two, shop list two, bananas. Third item or fourth item, then I say four minus three, one, that's three, shop list three gets me cheese. Now, one cool thing about PyCharm or almost any IDLE is that if you want to go to a previous line of code that you've written, you can always use the arrow keys to go up and down your code. For example, if I want to use the same line of code for my shop list three, I just hit the arrow key up and I get that code and I can modify it, do whatever I want. Awesome. So this is one way you can access your items in an array. There's also splicing in arrays. I can say shop list. Uh, zero to two, zero to two, and this will get me apples and oranges. It's very similar to what we discussed before. Instead of taking, it takes the first parameter, which is zero, it goes to one, and then it doesn't count your end range. So it says zero, one, whoops, we don't count two, it stops. If I wanna get the first three items, I'll say shop list zero to three, it says zero, one, two, whoops, we hit three, stop. So that's how we access values in lists. Now we wanna update it, say we're talking to our parents or we're talking to someone and they're like, oh, go ahead and get me um, blueberries as well. How do we add items to our list when we've already created it? Well, one nice thing about lists is that they're mutable. You can add objects, you can append, delete, do a lot of functions, a lot of different methods with lists. So what I'm gonna do, go ahead and do is add an item to our list and reuse the append function to do that. Shop list.append and I'm gonna go ahead and append blueberries, okay? Now, if I print out shop list, you're going to notice that blueberries has been appended to the end of our sh end of our shopping list, which is exactly what we wanted. But now let's say, oh, we no longer need apples. We actually need cherries. Okay. There's been a mass shortage of cherries. We want cherries now. How do we change that? Well, there's another way we can do this. We can go ahead and say shop list zero. So the item at the first position of our list should be equal to cherries okay go ahead and understand the syntax we're basically saying that whatever item exists at this position 
update its value to cherries. So now when I say shop list, instead of apples, I get cherries, oranges, bananas, cheese, blueberries. So that's one way you can update values in an index. And the append method allows us to add objects to our array or to our list. Now let's say, okay, we've done all of this, but guess what? We no longer need oranges because no one likes oranges. All right. How do we delete items in our list? Well, one way you can do this is by using the delete method. You say delete using D E L as the method name. And then you say shop list, whichever index, whatever you want to delete. I want to delete oranges and I know that's index two. Oh, I'm sorry. That's index one. So go ahead and say delete shop list one. And now when I say shop list, I get cherries, bananas, cheese, blueberries, oranges has been removed from my list. All right. So what have we covered so far? We've covered how to add to an array, how to create an array, how to get in position of an item in array and how to delete an object in an array. Now there's a few more cool things you can do with the race. Just like we had learned to be arithmetic operators, you can use the same things for arrays. You can go ahead and add arrays. You can multiply arrays. Let's go ahead and see how they work. First of all, let's go ahead and see how many items are in my shop list. And I can do that using the len function. The len method returns me how many items are in my list, no matter what. Okay. So there's four items in my list. Now let's say I had another list. I'm going to call this shop list two, and this is going to have Oh, uh, bread and jam and uh, peanut butter. Okay. And I want to combine these two lists together. But what I can do is say shop list plus shop list two. You can add array lists. You can add lists together to create one big giant list. Another thing you can do is multiply lists. You can say something like if you want to repeat values multiple times, you can say shop list times two. And that repeats the values in shop list once and then twice. So these are just some of the arithmetical operators that you can use in lists. They're very basic and they're very straightforward. Adding lists together, um, finding out if you can multiply lists. Two more functions I want to touch base on before I end this lecture, and that's max and min. Suppose we have in a list of the greatest uh, of a few numbers. I'm going to call this list num. And I'm going to go ahead and populate it with some numbers. One, four, five, or seven, 23 and six. Okay. If I want to find the max of list num, find the biggest number there, I can call the max function on our list num list. And if I want to find the smallest value, I can say min of list num. Awesome. So in this lecture, we touched base on lists. We covered what they are, how to create them, indexing, appending, deleting, mathematical operators. And then last but not least, the max and min functions. Now there's many, many more things that you can do with lists, but just as a quick introduction, I hope lists made sense to you. Anyways, that's it for my side and I'll see you in the next video.